Thank you, uh, members. I have received notice from the Minister of Education, Ms. Michelle McElveen, that she wishes to make a statement. Minister. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. And in compliance with Section 52 of the Northern Ireland Act 1998, I wish to make the following statement on behalf of former Minister Weir and Minister Hargy on the meeting of the North South Ministerial Council in the Education Sector held on Wednesday, the 9th of June 2021. The meeting was conducted via video conference due to current COVID restrictions. Minister Foley, TD, Minister for Education, Republic of Ireland, Minister Hargy as accompanying minister, and the then Minister of Education, Peter Weir, MLA, attended the meeting. The meeting was cordial and productive, and progress was made on a number of key issues, including education implications of UK withdrawal from the EU, response to COVID-19, review of the work programme, update on EU funding, educational underachievement, special educational needs, and cooperation between the inspectorates. The NSMC noted the current assessment in relation to the education implications of the UK's withdrawal from the EU and welcomed the ongoing engagement and implementation of all necessary measures to ensure that the agreed common travel area rights and privileges are protected. The ministers also welcomed the commitments made in relation to the future funding for education programmes and the work that is underway to develop them. Ministers also noted the decision of the Irish Government to facilitate continued access for Northern Ireland higher education students wishing to avail of Erasmus mobilities in another participating country in Europe and reaffirmed its commitment to continued cooperation on education moving forward in the new relationship between the EU and UK. Ministers also noted the UK's proposed funding of the Turing Scheme. Ministers noted the successful implementation of measures to facilitate the safe reopening of all schools following the school closures in January and February 2021 and the continued support provided by teachers to their pupils through the delivery of online provision. The Council noted the role played by education agencies in supporting pupils' well-being, particularly those vulnerable for interu from interruptions to direct contact with teachers and the wider education community. The Council also advised of the response by those delivering programmes in youth and other non-formal education provision. Ministers also noted that both education departments continue to liaise and share learnings in the development and delivery of response and supports to schools. The Council commended the efforts of all educators and support staff to deliver as normal an educational experience as possible to the 1.3 million pupils across both jurisdictions during the past 18 months, typifying the unspoken vocation associated with education. The NSMC noted the commitment to review the work programme and the plan to convene a meeting of senior officials from relevant departments, co-chaired by the Secretary-General and the Permanent Secretary of the Education Departments, to make recommendations for the future work programme. Ministers noted the continuing impact of COVID-19 on Peace Force funded shared education projects and the enhanced use of online technologies to overcome the challenges posed by the pandemic. The developments in relation to Peace Force shared education programme delivery, including proposed extensions and the positive findings of the recent Peace Force shared education impact evaluation published in April 2021, were noted by the Council. The NSMC noted that the expert panel appointed by the Northern Ireland Minister of Education under the New Decade New Approach Agreement to examine the links between persistent educational underachievement and socioeconomic background delivered its final report in June 2021. Ministers also noted the delivery on the delivery, Delivering Equality of Opportunities in Schools programme and how this has been provided as part of the evidence base to the panel. It also noted by the Council that evidence gathered as part of a fair start and the DES pro programme can be used as a basis to develop joint actions under the Peace Plus programme. Ministers received an update from Gary Cooper, CEO of Middletown Centre for Autism, and welcomed the progress made by the two education departments and the Middletown Centre for Autism to facilitate and maintain the delivery of, of the centre's range of services since the last meeting in 2016. 
The Council welcomed the efforts of the MCA management and staff to remain operational and the continued delivery of elements of their service throughout the period of COVID-19 restrictions. The proposed delivery plan for the centre and that the new board has been in place since April 2021 was noted. The NSMC noted that the MCA's day-to-day -day operations have been largely unaffected by the UK withdrawal from the EU, but matters of data transfer and recognition of professional qualifications remain under consideration. The Council also noted recent developments in the delivery of special educational needs programmes in both jurisdictions. Ministers welcomed the continuing collaborative work of the Education Inspectorates, albeit online, due to public health advice. Finally, Mr Speaker, my officials and I look forward to working with Minister Foley and her department as we continue to meet the challenges presented by the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you, Minister. I call the Chair of the Education Committee, Mr Chris Little. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. I think the last time I spoke in education in this uh, chamber, the Education Minister was replaced, so I hope uh, you're, you're not met with the same fate, and I'm grateful for the early, early engagement that you've given uh, to myself and to the Education Committee in your role. Um, Equal uh, educational opportunity is key, and increasingly we're hearing that to achieve that, equal digital educational opportunity is key. Other jurisdictions are working towards one appropriate digital device and internet connectivity per pupil. Um, can I ask the Education Minister for her assessment of the extent of the digital inequality in Northern Ireland uh, faced by pupils and whether she will be working towards that aim of one appropriate device and internet connectivity per pupil in Northern Ireland? Thank the, the Chair of the Committee for his, his comments, particularly in relation to um, digital device and also the, issues that we, the ongoing issues in relation to um, internet access, which um, does create a problem and obviously, done, obviously then relates to um, inequality um, amongst pupils. You will be aware that up until the 21st of June, 24,824 new devices have been provided through EA to schools to lend to pupils, and schools have been informed that devices will remain with schools into the next year for ongoing support for learning for both disadvantaged and vulnerable pupils. There's a small contingency of devices have been kept in case of further lockdown or to replace um, damaged devices. So this is an issue which is ongoing within um, the department, particularly um, with discussions with EA, uh, and certainly anything that we can do to address this is, is obviously on our radar. Mr Robin Newton. Uh, thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her statement and her answers so far. Minister, within your statement, you make a brief reference to cooperation between the inspectorates. Uh, obviously, that's a very important area of, of work. Um, could I ask the Minister, would she be able to expand uh, or elaborate uh, on what has entailed in that area of work? I thank, thank the member for this question and obviously I welcome the cooperation that has um, taken place um, uh, between both inspectorates and I'm pleased that ETI has been able to, to share their knowledge and their skills and their insight with other, in, insight with other inspectors uh, and learn from their counterparts. For example, over the last year, the ETI have shared practice on its approach towards inspecting how schools in Northern Ireland are addressing bullying. Since the beginning of the pandemic, the senior managements of both inspectorates have continued to engage regularly and have shared information and practice with the heads and deputy heads of inspectorates across the United Kingdom and um, the Republic of Ireland. This has enabled important learning to be shared, um, both in relation to remote learning, support for schools, education restart, public examinations, recovery and transition through to a resumption of inspection. And as you'll appreciate, this has been a particularly challenging time right across education. And it is good to know that um, inspectors have been continuing on work and learning sort of from best practice from others as well. Mr. Pat Sheehan. I thank the Minister for her statement here this morning. Ed educational underachievement and the shared challenges it presents right across this island 
uh, was discussed at an NSMC meeting last year, uh, and since then we have had the, uh, the first start report. Can I ask uh, how cooperation is going to be enhanced in this area in the time ahead? Thanks. I thank the member for his, his, his question, and as you'll understand, I wasn't present at the meeting to, to get the full report of actually um, the engagement, particularly around educational underachievement. But certainly, this was our, the work that we have done in, in Northern Ireland is, is pro, I'm guessing, something which is um, will be useful as a, as a reference point to, to those in the Irish Republic as well. And as you know, the, the work of the panel with regards to a fair start um, comes with a substantial budget attached to it, and that's something, obviously, that we, we will be working um, towards as an, an executive. Um, but sharing best practice is something which is, is useful to do, and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm quite confident that that will be something which will be continued in the discussions. Mr Justin McNulty. Thank the Minister for her statement. It is good to see such positive uh, references made to the Middletown Centre for Autism. And I welcome their incoming board and wish them all well in their very important roles. Um, but there was one note which concerns me, Minister, and that is in relation to Brexit and the fact that the UK withdrawal from the EU that matters of data transfer and recognition of professional qualifications remain under consideration. I am just concerned. I am not really worried about the transfer of sausages West East, but I am really worried that the impact of Brexit has the potential to have an adverse consequence on children's education. Could you just give us some more information on that, please, Minister? I thank the member for his, his, his question, but obviously I think the issue in relation to that was primarily with regards to um, data sharing and data adequacy. And as you'll understand, that since that last meeting, um, this issue has prim essentially been um, resolved. So it was really alongside um, the recognition of uh, professional qualifications. Um, this um, sort of fell in with other implications for EA and CEA and also for Middletown in providing services in and employing staff from Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. So it was that sort of sharing of information which was something which was um, of um, concern at that meeting. But since then, the European Union has formally recognised the UK's high data um, protection standards after more than a year of, of discussions. Um, and this will allow then the seamless flow of uh, personal data from the EU to the UK, um, which will then um, obviously address the concerns that were raised at that particular meeting. Mr Robbie Butler. Thank you, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, welcome the Minister to her first uh, uh, box. There's no stranger to the box and, and given uh, information. So uh, with regard to um, uh, Peace 4 funding and the, and the transitional period to Peace 5 funding, I've been contacted by many groups um, who are going to fall through the cracks um, and there doesn't seem to be anywhere to catch them. Can you get update the House with regard to any of the shared education projects that may fall foul of uh, lack of funding between Peace 4 and Peace 5 and any steps that you've taken to address that? Okay, and I thank the member for his question. I understand that there have been some concerns in relation to that. Obviously, Peace 4, there were two main um, shared education Peace 4 projects um, for which the Department of Education um, departments are identified as accountable um, departments, and that was collaboration and sharing in education, which takes place within primary, post-primary and special schools, and sharing from the start, which obviously takes care, um, place within early year settings. Um, both projects have been impacted by COVID, as you would imagine, um, and obviously the, the associated periods of school closures have had an impact on that. Um, there has, and I understand, been requests for a temporary variation arrangement, um, and this has provided some flexibility and ensured that schools in early year settings um, have been, uh, haven't been penalised um, for an interruption to delivery. Um, obviously, principals and leaders have been working really hard in order to try to um, fulfil the needs associated with um, shared education programmes, and, and obviously face-to-face -face contact was something which was missing during that period of time. Um, and it has been replaced to a certain degree by online technology. So there has been work about trying to deliver on those projects, and that has continued. Um, both uh, projects have sought an extension for a further year. SEUPB has approved the extension for sharing from the start project and the extension for collaboration and sharing in education is currently under consideration and will, re will require approval from SEUPB. So that work is, is continuing in order to, to reach a solution. 
Mrs. Diane Dodd. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and can I thank the Minister um, for her answers. Um, I was interested in the question that the Chair of the Education Committee um, asked the Minister in relation to digital poverty. And there's no doubt that the COVID experience of children um, and young people um, has exacerbated that and made life uh, incredibly difficult. And I know that the Department has made enormous strides to helping young people around this um, issue. However, I'm also keen that young people and that we, um, as a, an education system, develop a digital spine um, for Northern Ireland so that young people are being uh, taught uh, the technologies uh, that will help them to gain employment in the future. Would the Minister agree with me um, that increasing young people's knowledge um, of the digital sector earlier in life uh, is uh, appropriate uh, and indeed desirable and that we can work together to do that so that we will have young people who will be able to take their place in the economy of the future. Okay, and I do thank the, the member for her um, question. Obviously she brings her own experience from the Department of the Economy uh, and no doubt also from her grandchildren too. Um, and, I, and I know that from my own nieces and nephews, just how um, sort of digitally they are aware from about the age of three years old. They probably can work my phone better than I can. Um, but I, I absolutely agree with the work, with the sentiment which she has raised and it is something that we probably need to be much more cognizant of um, and, and focusing in our in our funding, and it very much does tie into um, the, the commentary from the, the chair of the committee. Ms. Nicola Brogan. Gormi Agad Pre, Las Cancorla, and Buhas Lesh, and Ira Fosta. I thank the Minister for her statement here today. Can I ask the Minister, um, in relation to ongoing and future cooperation, what her assessment is on the impact that COVID has had on um, cross border shared education projects, please? And I, th I thank the member for her, her um, question. And obviously, I just sort of refer back maybe to the responses that I gave to, to Mr. Butler in that they have had an impact. It's quite significant in the fact that there hasn't, they haven't been able to have face-to-face -face, um, engagement, which has really been critical, um, particularly around shared education experience. Um, and while online technologies have been beneficial, they haven't been able to really replace that. So, you know, so I, am, I am glad that we ha we're in a situation where we were able to um, seek an extension for that funding so that sort of invaluable work um, can continue. Mr Harry Harvey. Thank you, <coughs> Principal Deputy Speaker. Thank you, Minister, for your statement and your answers so far. <coughs> Yesterday, Minister, the Autism Bill had its first reading in this House. We are all aware of the outstanding work of the Middletown Centre for Autism and the support it provides parents. Could the Minister provide details of the level of funding the, the centre receives and of the work it carries out? Thank you. And I thank the member for his, his, um, his question. And absolutely, the, the Middletown Centre is, um, is known for its outstanding um, work. And obviously, I would recommend that if the committee does get the opportunity um, and visits are permitted um, post um, September that the committee does actually take the, the opportunity to go to the Middletown Centre to see that the work that they have um, been doing. I, I had the opportunity to do that while I was on the committee, but the Middletown Centre does receive a total annual resource budget um, for £2.5 million, and that's for 2021-22, um, of which the department uh, provides £1.25 million. The allocated capital budget um, for the same period is 0 0.2 million pounds of which the department provides 100,000. Um, as you know the Middleton Centre was established in, in 2007 and um, it does support the delivery of um, services for learning support and assessment and also training and research. The learning support and, and assessment service is a second level service delivering intensive assessment and learning support adapted to meet COVID-19 regulations through a transdisciplinary approach to around 60 children and young people with autism and three whole school referrals to facilitate school staff in creating an autism friendly environment on an annual basis in Northern Ireland and also 12 referrals to the learning support and assessment service in the Republic of Ireland where overall delivery is much more focused on training. Um, they aim to provide 3,300 training opportunities to professionals and 1,000 parents in Northern Ireland in 21-22, 
and 7,000 professional training opportunities alongside 7,000 parental training opportunities in the Irish Republic. Mrs Rosemary Barton. Thank you. thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, and thank you, Minister, for your answers so far. In relation to education, under Achievement Minister, what sharing has taken place of the challenges of persistent educational underachievement in relation to the links with socio-economic background on both sides of the border? Um, I thank the, the member for her question, obviously referring really to the sort of previous response to um, uh, Mr Sheehan, in that obviously I wasn't present at the meeting, um, and so at this stage I'm really unaware of the ongoing um, piece of work, particularly in relation to underachievement. Um, I do know that, the, um, that an update was given in relation to a, a fair start, um, which is obviously the, the document which has been published for Northern Ireland. Um, and I would like to think that there will be some lessons will be learned for both sides of the border in relation to that um, ongoing piece of work. Mr. Cathal Boylan. Gora Mogget, a pre just and could I thank the Minister for her statement. But, Minister, just some clarity. Are we saying here in terms of the mutual recognition you know, of qualifications? Was it a data transfer issue or is it a separate issue? It was discussed last year at the North South Ministerial Council in relation to that, and also just in relation to special education needs programmes that there's been recent developments in both jurisdictions. Could you give us a wee update on what exactly took place there? Gormila Mogget. Um, thank you, Member, for his answer, this question. Obviously, I, I understand that the issue was in relation to data sharing. Um, however, I suppose both have encouraged. There's an issue in relation, perhaps a little bit in relation to the regulators and, and how they continue their work um, in um, developing um, responses. Um, obviously, mindful obviously that there is sort of cross-border mobility for teachers, um, and the GTCI and the Teaching Council have engaged with each other, and I understand with other um, UK um, teaching regulators to um, mitigate any immediate issues. Um, policies have also been put in place to ensure suitable, um, suitably qualified teachers continue to be able to register and work in either jurisdiction, and that's facilitating, obviously, the mobility while ensuring all necessary safeguards and, um, are put in place and also observed. Um, so that, I think, probably was something that may, may have been discussed at a previous meeting, but I do understand that they, the issues that they did have, which they had concerns about, were in relation to um, data, data adequacy and also data sharing. Mr Peter Weir. So, Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her statement and answers so far, and join with her as somebody who has also visited the Middletown Centre, encouraging, I think it would be very worthwhile for anyone, particularly the Education Committee, to visit it. Uh, Minister, you mentioned in the statement that the issue of uh, the UK-wide uh, Turing scheme has been, was raised at the meeting, and indeed um, information was then given to um, to the Minister from the Republic of Ireland. Can you give the House a bit more um, background and information on the Turing scheme and also what um, encouragement will be given to particularly schools here in Northern Ireland to participate within that? Yeah, and, I, and I thank the member for his question. I could really put the question back to the member as he was the one who was actually there. Um, but in relation to the Turing scheme, obviously um, I understand that Gavin Williamson, the Education Secretary, he announced in December last year um, a pot of around £100 million um, would be provided for over 35,000 students to be able to go on placements and exchanges overseas, and that was a start in September uh, 2021. Um, you will know that the Irish government has also put in place a scheme which will um, allow for continued access for um, Northern Ireland higher education students to avail of the Erasmus mobilities in Europe. Um, the majority of the Turing scheme um, funding is focused on higher education and really falls within the remit of the Department of the, for the Economy. Um, to apply for schools projects, schools must be providing general vocational or technical education on any level from primary school to upper secondary education or be a national schools consortium such as the Education Authority and therefore they're, they're applying then on behalf of a number of schools. Um, Unfortunately, to date, uh, no schools from Northern Ireland have applied um, for the new Turing scheme. 
I understand that a meeting is to take place um, with the Minister for the Economy in Northern Ireland and the Minister of State for Universities at the Department of Education in England to discuss how to spread awareness and to raise awareness about the scheme um, to schools and colleges. Um, this meeting was scheduled to take place in May and I understand it will now take place in September but I don't have any sort of further details in relation to that. Mr John O'Dowd. I think Mr. Weir may have said a pub quiz question. Who's the former minister to ask the question of a statement for which he was responsible? <laughs> but in terms of my own question to the minister, <laughs> uh, the question to the minister is this: um, there was quite a significant announcement yesterday in relation to 40 million euro from the shared Ireland fund for universities, which is a very welcome announcement. Was there any indication from Minister Foley that uh, the Dublin government would also be interested in? Uh, shared Ireland funding towards education, particularly along the border, or would the minister lobby Minister Foley for such an investment to be made in shared education along the border from that fund? Okay, and I, thank, I thank the member for his question. And I, I, as I've said a number of times in the statement, I wasn't, I wasn't present at the meeting, so I'm not sure whether any further information was, um, or anything was discussed in relation to any sort of prospective fund, but happy to follow that up. Peter can tell you afterwards. <laughs> Mr. Andrew Muir. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and first of all, to welcome the Minister to your role. We miss her as the Chair of the Infrastructure Committee. Um, th this uh, North South Ministerial Council Education Sector meeting um, also discussed the expert panel on educational underachievement, um, which also in that uh, re re report referred to post primary transfer in Northern Ireland as a systemic inequality. Can the Minister just provide an update in the context of that, in terms of how many children are unplaced in terms of post-primary transfer this year? Because this is an issue that came across my desk and I'm sure many others as well. Thank you. Okay, and I thank the, the member for his question. And uh, as of today, there are currently 85 children who are unplaced. Um, and as you will know, this has been a, a piece of work now over the last number of weeks in order to try to, um, to rectify this. Um, a number of um, challenges have been presented, um, and obviously in order to do that, we have actually um, made a number of um, temporary variations to, to skills in order to try to alleviate some of the pressures. Um, as you will know, that there are some areas which it's more difficult to achieve um, extra places because schools physically maybe can't take any further um, um, school population. Um, but we have been working very closely um, with the EA and with schools uh, and working with parents in order to find suitable places. Um, I would actually appeal to parents to, to identify a, a particular school for their child because by doing that, then we can see where the true pressures are and we can then try to, to alleviate that. But um, as of today, the number has decreased, um, but it's still probably still a little too high for my liking. Mr. Jim Allister. Thank you. What do affirmations by the Minister's new leader mean in regard to the protocol's adverse impact on North South meetings if meetings such as this continue in a routine fashion? If the Minister and her party are serious, in opposing the protocol, then when will we see an impact on North Southry, given that East West continues to be seriously trashed? And I thank the, the member for his question. And obviously, as you'll understand, that we will obviously have to we have ministerial duties, and uh, there's a ministerial code that we need to apply by. However. Um, all strands need to work together and clearly if there are um, serious issues between East and West, um, they will then obviously then reflect on the relationship that we do have with um, the, uh, our North-South relationships um, and that will then be impacted then uh, and will be demonstrated as, as the member will know. Thank you. No other members indicated to me that they wish to ask the Minister a question. So if members take their ease for a few moments, we'll move on to the next item of business then.